environment, of course, completely alien to us. Uh, but it is the environment that we currently think is the environment where the most, most primitive life on Earth happens. If that's correct, and there are a number of ways of, of carrying that notion further, but here is one of them, is that we would all be comfortable with the notion that the early Earth, uh, once dropping the core, forming, the, forming a crust and a mantle, where the average surface temperature of the Earth globally would rise by over 1,000 degrees centigrade by dropping the core. And the core on Earth dropped to the center of the Earth, not quite on a weekend, uh, but uh, quickly. A thousand plus degrees centigrade would have been released uh, into, the, uh, into the bulk planet. It was a catastrophic event. Earth then was a very hot, volcanically active place. To give you some idea of how active it is, the oldest sample I would contend that we are that we are currently that right now we are in contact with the oldest sample that we can all access, and it's called air. Hmm. Uh, there are isotopes of the noble gas xenon that we're breathing right now. Isotopes of xenon. Those of you who are chemists, physical chemists, and physicists, and other scientists recognize the xenon isotope, and you can. Uh, X, Xe on the periodic table. The uh, isotopic composition of xenon, for example, in the air that we're breathing now, there's trace xenon in the air. We compare the trace xenon in the air we're breathing now with the trace, really trace, xenon that's still present in the deep earth at over 100 kilometers below us. We find a very interesting memory. And the memory is interpreted this way. Degassing of the volatile components of planet Earth early on in its history occurred so quickly and so massively that all volcanoes, the contribution from all volcanoes, in the last 4.4 billion years, imagine how many volcanoes have erupted in the last 4.4 billion years. The contribution of gases to the outer Earth by all volcanoes in the last 4.4 billion years is trivial compared to what happened during the first 100 billion years. That gives you some sense of how violent uh, the early Earth was in terms of snapping into a whole new configuration of a planet, which we commonly find now. Earth was a rough place. Hot, but current evidence from ancient crystals being found in Western Australia now imply, do not demonstrate yet, but imply that oceans may have been present on the Earth by only 200 million years after the origin of the Earth itself. So all oceans, oceans may have been sloshing around on the Earth for the last 4.4 billion years. And again, that is a, an interesting, important constraint on habitability. Oceans. Mars is being explored as we speak, and just two days ago, uh, Opportunity, of course, which landed in Eagle Crater, here is 800 meters here, so distance from here to here would be about one kilometer on this uh, orbital view of Mars. Uh, Opportunity, over the last 950 Martian days, has just arrived here on the rim of Victoria Crater. The importance uh, of that is simply this, that uh, one, the Mars rovers are doing great, especially opportunities just rolling like the ever ready bunny. Just, just real quick. Uh, it's just, it's roved across this uh, kilometers worth of dunes like this, and then as it approached uh, the Victoria, you notice that the landscape became quite uh, flat, 
and quite uh, conducive to just driving right along. Uh, remember that Opportunity uh, spent several hundred, a uh, couple of hundred days in endurance going through different layers of rock uh, preserved on, on the Mars surface, and it was found, the following was found. Uh, water existed on Mars. Standing water existed on Mars. The exact timing of it is only guesstimated at the present time, but probably in excess of three billion years ago. Hmm. Long haul. But you notice the relative size and endurance compared to Victoria. Uh, Victoria is going to be getting down much deeper. And as you know, deeper in the rock sequence means older. The sequence of layered rocks here records a memory of, of wind-blown sand deposits and also water. Chemical compositions returned from by the rover uh, give very nice chemical compositions of the rock, uh, which then tell us something about how that rock uh, forms. Well, the importance then of Victoria is that we will get down further, we'll get down deeper in time on Mars in the upcoming uh, several weeks and find out more about the history of Mars and its suitability for life. Here's Victoria here. It's about 800 meters across. Opportunity is perched right there at the present time. And it's looking for a way in. Here is its view of Victoria now from the rim, looking at a whole series of, of ledges of rock. And again, younger, getting older as you go down. And here's a close-up view of that one outcrop here. Again, lots of information. Endurance probably went, out, went down only about from here to here in its sequence. Uh, opportunity will now be able to sample much deeper, much older, and find out uh, how much what kind of, of uh, life might have existed, or the, certainly the conditions. Uh, but here's the more recent sediments on Mars indicate that li uh, although it was liquid water, it was not something to be, it would not have been comfortable for any of us. Highly acidic, hmm. syrupy, nasty stuff. Hmm. We'll see whether the conditions prior to that uh, would have been would have been more conducive to life, but the general notion is is that life in the wa in the kind of water and the kind of solutions that were found so far by opportunity uh, are are going to be very harsh uh, for sustaining life as we know it on the early Mars. Not impossible, just real char real real hard. The questions I'd like to ask and end up with at the end of the talk will be: uh, Is this? Uh, life as we know it will be on planets. It will not be on stars, of course. So, are planets common in the universe? Is our solar system typical? In what ways is planet Earth unusual? Is most life likely to be carbon-based? I'm a Trekkie. I remember the Orca. Remember? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. No kill I. <laughs> no kill I. No. Live long and prosper, you know. And uh, you know, thank God for Cap. Cap what was it, Dr. McCoy and concrete? You right. know, it's just it can, you know, concrete can heal a laser, 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 uh, uh, phaser, phaser, a phaser wound. Yes. Uh, so is, is most life likely to be carbon-based, or are we being, are we being? carbon chauvinists by thinking that that life would be basically like us, uh, chemically. Is complex life common in the universe? Complex life meaning, uh, again, chipmunks and beyond. <laughs> uh, does, does life elsewhere follow similar evolutionary trends and evolutionary rates? <laughs> 